Welcome to Fish News! I'm Sid Rosie, reporting Fish News on channel Fish News. We have five stories tonight. Major updates at the Epcot Aquarium and Walt Disney World. Clearwater Aquarium recovering from Hurricane Helene. Florida man catches a fish on the road. Nightlights disturb fish proven by scientists. And new hope for salmon populations in California. We'll be right back. Are you officially tired of your plants melting away? If so, now is your opportunity to add some life with the Hyger Aquarium Light. With full spectrum LED and a controller for color, brightness, and timers, this aquarium light is better than the rest I've tried. Code Sid Rosie for 5% off, link in description. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Welcome back to Fish News. The Ocean Life Room at Disney World Sea Base Aquarium in Epcot has reopened after about seven weeks of tank maintenance. Holy moly, I thought two days of tank maintenance was a lot. Corals and fish were removed, new filters and lighting were added, and the eel tank aquascape changed. I don't think the eels mind the change. They're doing what they always do. The fun fact plaques below the tank seem to have been updated. I was hoping they'd have more specific information on what types of fish live here, but I'm glad they were updated nonetheless. The screen does look brighter and more clear. Could just also be a placebo. The world may never know. And of course, it's still pranking kids into thinking it's a real tank. A classic. The big tank to the right of the room has changed significantly. Upon reopening, it was void of critters. I assume it wasn't fully cycled yet, but as of my last trip there, they added two fish and some snails. My favorite tank, which was overgrown with beautiful, lush pink corals, has been trimmed immensely as well. No fish have been added or removed from this tank as far as I'm aware, and the same goes for the lionfish and frogfish tanks, which are visually unchanged. The big tank to the left was missing sea urchins and this yellowhead jawfish, but there are some in the nursery upstairs which might have come from this tank. Speaking of the nursery, new cuttlefish hatchlings were added to the tank which used to house cardinal fish hatchlings. Those cardinal fish were moved into the tank behind the counter along with their older siblings. How many more fish can they fit in that tiny tank? Stay tuned to find out. Big news here, Prince Charming, the slipper lobster, was in a different spot one day. Yeah, it's crazy. Info on the new manatee, Inigo, has been added to the chalkboard above their enclosure. She weighs about 1,700 pounds, skinny legend, and has been to multiple rescues throughout her life. The dolphins are still at the aquarium for now, but the plaque next to their tank, which used to have information on them, has been updated to conservation info instead, which I really do quite like. And lastly, for the Epcot Aquarium, a spoiler alert is in place for the pumpkin scavenger hunt because they put a pumpkin painted like Dory above the entrance slash exit, which was a really adorable detail to come across. Finding Dory who? We found her. Stay tuned to find out how another Florida aquarium is doing after Hurricane Helene. Welcome back to Fish News! The Clearwater Marine Aquarium has seen overwhelming support after four feet of flooding from Hurricane Helene impacted filtration systems. This caused two manatees and seven sea turtles to be relocated. Vice President of Zoological Care Kelly Martin said they had been talking about bringing manatees to the aquarium for over a decade. They worked very hard to get them there, but after only two months, they needed to relocate back to Zoo Tampa temporarily due to the hurricane's estimated $2 million worth of damage, which was done in just 45 minutes. Over $100,000 have been donated to help repair the filters and drywall, and you can go to give.clearwateraquarium.org if you're interested in donating as well. Stay tuned to find out how Florida man caught a fish in the road. Welcome back, I'm Sid Rosie and I've got a short and sweet story for you. As News 6 was reporting on Hurricane Milton, they witnessed two guys fishing in the middle of the road, which was flooded at the time, and one of them caught a bass. Dude, you got a fish. You, I saw you, you just caught that fish. I did. They said it's, quote, tradition, and they did it during Hurricane Ian as well. The cherry on top was someone riding a lawnmower down the flooded road in the midst of all this tomfoolery. 
And there's a guy coming behind us in a lawnmower, isn't there? You know? That's America right there. <laughs> That's America if I've ever seen it. So we've got people fishing in the road. We've got a guy on a lawnmower. You doing all right? If I had to describe Florida using only one video, this would probably be it. It's pretty accurate. Up next, you may have heard that blue light has negative effects for us, but what about for fish? We'll be right back. Welcome back to Fish News. Do you turn your aquarium lights off at night? I sure hope so, because a scientists from the Institute of Hydrobiology, Chinese Academy of Sciences and the MPIAB have shown that lights left on all night, especially blue spectrum lights, cause stress in fish after only a few nights. Female zebra danios were exposed to artificial light at night, known as Allen. Hey, Allen which caused them to spend more time near the aquarium wall, stick together, and swim less. Blue spectrum lighting caused these anxiety-like behaviors to occur faster and stronger than others. Scientists even observed that offspring of those fish swam less despite never being exposed to artificial light. Allen exists indoors and outdoors through our devices, street lights, and lights on buildings. It's known to impact natural sleep rhythms for most animals. Some aquarium lights advertise blue lighting as moonlight or nighttime mode, but this study has proven once and for all that fish should not be exposed to any light at night. Case closed. That was my gavel. Stay tuned for double good news, which would be great news, about salmon populations in California. Welcome back to Great News. The nation's biggest dam removal, which occurred in California, has resulted in the first salmon sighting in 100 years in Cali. The Iron Gate Dam previously blocked off the part of the Klamath River where the salmon was seen traveling upstream. The Iron Gate was one of four hydroelectric dams to be removed from the waterway. Klamath used to be the third largest salmon producing river in the West before the construction of the dams in the early 1900s. They blocked access to cold water for salmon to spawn in, which is what led to the drastic decline in population. It's a damn shame. Minecraft players had to resort to skeletons for bone meal. It was awful. Scientists say it can be years or maybe decades before the river is fully populated again. In other California salmon news, yes, there's more. Over at California's American River, scientists are coming up with creative ways to restore salmon and steelhead populations. The U.S. Bureau of Reclamation announced a restoration project which includes adding 6,800 cubic yards of gravel into the riverbed. This would allow female salmon to make nests and lay their eggs. They'll also be adding elements to aid younger fish in hiding from predators and strong currents. Due to dam building and hydraulic mining, the fish are limited to only 10% of their habitat, according to Erica Bishop, one of the Bureau's partners for the project. So they're working with what they have to add biodiversity and help the ecosystem and provide food for us. It's nice to see so much positive change when it comes to fish in their natural environment for once. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fish News. For more like this, subscribe, it's free, and you can also be notified of new uploads by hitting the bell icon below. If you've made it this far, let me know which story was your favorite. Thanks for watching Fish News. I'm Sid Rosie wishing you Peace and love. Yeah! <laughs> the buzz light your face, I can't. The ocean life room at the- Sorry, way too much energy. I just got excited. Hydroelectric. The- The- <laughs> Hydroelectric dams to be- Oop, part of my French. To be removed from the waterway. It's nice to see so much 